السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We'll give it a test, inshallah. See if it works again. Inshallah, I want to see if it works. I'm just trying to. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Ayyakum Allah. Keep hal, how are you? Alhamdulillah, mashallah, I'm finally connected to you. Oh, it's working. Yeah, it's working. I'm going to see if I can connect to Ustaz Hadifa. Is that okay? Okay, inshallah, yeah. يا الله غني سلام ورحمة الله الحمد لله فالي وقت فإن شاء الله بسم الله السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته ناري تكبير الحمد لله ما ادري ايش صار حياكم الله سوري شيخ انا بارك الله فيكم اتس كلير انا الحمد لله الحمد لله اخواني في الله وي هاف ويز اس توداي ا سبيشال جيست استاذ محمد حذيفه حفظه الله اند هي از كارلي ا ستودنت ان جامعه الاسلاميه يونيفرستي اوف المدينه ان ان شاء الله باذن الله تعالى هي ان شاء الله شي بي جرادويت ان ذس سيمستر Inshallah, uh, should be. Alhamdulillah, our Ustaz, may Allah honor him, he's a hafiz of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also he's from one of the students of our beloved Shaykh, his Shaykh, and he's also my Shaykh, <laughs> our beloved Shaykh Abdul Muhtan ibn Muhammad al-Qasim, who is uh, the Imam of Masjid al-Nabawi, and subhanAllah, it was him. And his father, who came and they collected the works of no, it was his his grandfather, uh, Sheikh Al uh, Muhammad bin Qasim. No, sorry, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Qasim, and his father Muhammad. They're the ones who collected all the fatawa of Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, and uh, he's one of the one of the scholars of this Ummah. Him and his father. Uh, inshallah, bi Allah Taala, uh, the topic that the Sheikh Abdul is going to discuss. Is uh, the benefit uh, the importance of seeking knowledge? Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, and Salat was Salam, and Alameen, and Muhammad, and Ali, and Sahibi, and Jamaeen. Um, inshallah, I don't want to keep this uh, like it's late as it is, and I don't want to keep it too long, inshallah. And you know, like, like Sheikh Arsami, uh, he says, he says, yabqa min, uh, min He said, little, little bit, but it stays, it's better than taking in a lot and then it leaving you. No. So, uh, inshallah, I think the, the objective of this muhadara uh, or this live is obviously not, obviously, Talib al ilm is a life journey, right? So, mm-hmm. we can't mention everything, but maybe mm-hmm. the main points. The main points, so uh, especially for the, those who are in the beginning of seeking knowledge, uh, just pushing them in the correct direction, giving them general nasaih for them to follow, and uh, so on. So, the first thing, inshallah, quickly I want to mention are some of the virtues of seeking knowledge. Um, and there are many hadiths which... Regarding the virtues of seeking knowledge. From them is the hadith in Muslim when you read Allah be khayran faqtihu fi al-deen. To whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for, he will give him understanding of the religion. And from them is the hadith in Muslim, hadith 36 or 40 in awiyah. Man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilman sahhan allahu lahu bihi tariqan ila jannah. To whoever treads upon the path of seeking knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make his path to jannah easy for him. And uh, even in the Quran, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would never command you to make a dua and increase for anything except for ilm. So these are many ahadith and I don't want to mention too many of them because most of them are uh, known. However, there are two statements of the Salaf and some of the ulama that I want to mention that many students knowledge don't know but this really shows how important uh, seeking knowledge is. The first is by Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah and it's also narrated uh, Imam Sufyan Thori. They said, لَيْسَ بَعْدَ الْفَرَائِضِ أَفْضَلُ مِنْ طَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ he said there is nothing better after the obligatory actions except seeking knowledge. And 
We know that if somebody wants to go closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, somebody wants to increase their iman, the best thing that they can do or they can start off with are those things which are obligatory upon them. In Hadith 30 from Urbay Nawiyah Bukhari, Hadith Qudsi, Allah Ta'ala, Man Ada Li Waliyan Fakad Azan Tubil Harp, Wama Taqarraba Ilay Abdi Bishay in Ahabba Ilay, Minma Iftaratu Ali. That my slave doesn't come close to me with anything except that which I have made obligatory upon him. And then once he's done that, Wama is Al Abdi Taqarrabu Ilay Abin Nawafili, Hatta Uhibba. Then he does a Nawafil, and the more Nawafil that he does, he keeps coming more closer to me, more closer and more closer. And we know that the best things after the obligations that we can do is seek knowledge. There's also a similar statement by uh, Imam Al-Nawi rahimahullah and he says in Muqaddimah al Majmu' he says ittafaqa jama'atu salaf he said a number of groups of the salaf all of them have agreed anna l-ishtighala bil-ilmi he said all of them agree that being busy with seeking knowledge afdalu min al-nawafil wa tasbih wa ghayr zalika min af'al al-badan so they all agree that seeking knowledge is better than praying nawafil, doing tasbih, and all of the other actions which are considered nawafil. So this, inshallah, should be a small motivation for somebody to study, that you are doing the best action after the fara'id. You are doing, you are in ibadah. You are learning about the religion of Allah. You are increasing your knowledge about the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, fr- from some of the fruits, your uh, iman is increasing. Your uh, you, your knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is increasing. You know how to go about in your daily life. You know how to interact with others, buying, selling, as far as fiqh, um, and so on. From all of these, uh, look at the number of um, the benefits that you are uh, gaining. And even if, let's say, you're finding it difficult, as long as you are studying, you are in ibadah and you are being rewarded for this uh, ibadah. Jazakallah khairan. Is there anything else you want to add or I have a few questions for you? Khasta fadl with some of the questions that you have. Atayyib, Shaykh. Ahsallahu alaykum. So the first uh, question is, what is considered, what is, what is beneficial knowledge? What is beneficial knowledge? Uh, now, now this question is uh, actually very, very important. Because um, you want to seek knowledge. What type of knowledge you want to seek? There's two types. Either either it's beneficial or either it's non-beneficial. Now nobody, if you were to ask any person on the street, if you're learning, do you want to learn something which benefits you or that doesn't benefit you? Obviously, they're going to say what? They're going to say, we we want that knowledge that is going to benefit us. And before I mention some points, there's a book that I would really recommend. And this book is by uh, Ibn Rajib. Rahimahullah, student of Ibn Qayyim, and also the grandson of Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Have you heard that before? No, no, no. <laughs> Shaykh uh, Usaymi, Rahimahullah, he says, وَهُوَ حَفِيدُهُ بِالْتَلْمَذَةِ Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, uh, he's a grandson by teaching, because obviously he studied with Ibn Qayyim, and Ibn Qayyim studied with Shaykh al-Islam. Mm-hmm. So he's not his uh, Ab al-Tini, but he's his mm-hmm. Ab al-Dini. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. <laughs> Um, so he's not his biological father, but in terms of deen, ala kulli hal. Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, he's got a book called Fadu Ilmi Salafi Ala Ilmi Khalaf. The virtues of the knowledge of the Salaf compared to, or upon the, uh, the knowledge of those who came after them, of the Khalaf. In this, it's, it's a book which can be read in maybe, it's translated into English. Uh, there's a few publications for it. And it can be read in like two hours. If you just sit down for two hours straight, you can read the, the whole book. It's not a long book. In this book, he mentions a number of things. He mentions what is considered beneficial knowledge. He gives examples of beneficial knowledges and sciences to study. And he gives examples of benefic- uh, of those uh, knowledges which are harmful and so on. So this is a very, uh, a very important book for any student of knowledge to learn or to read and study. And it's a book which should be read more than once, minimum of three times. Mm-hmm. He mentions a number of narrations in there. From them, he narrates that some of the Salaf used to say, لَيْسَ الْعِلْمُ بِكَثْرَةِ الْرِوَايَةِ وَلَكِنَّ الْعِلْمَ الْخَشْيَةِ Knowledge is not an, having a number of narrations, it's having information. حدثنا رواه البخاري عن نبيه رأيه قال الله تعالى قال الشيخ الإسلام That's not, that's not knowledge. For you, you being able to quote, that's not knowledge. 
وَلَكِنَّ الْعِلْمَ الْخَشْيَةِ Knowledge, uh, beneficial knowledge is what? It's having the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart. Hence why some of the salaf would also say, مَنْ خَشْيَ اللَّهَ فَهُوَ عَالِمٌ وَمَنْ عَصَ اللَّهَ فَهُوَ جَاهِلٌ Whoever, um, whoever has fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the alim, he is a scholar. But the one who disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and falls into sin, then he, he is a jahil. He can remember as Fatul Bari, Bukhari, Muslim. He can remember as what he wants. He said jahil if he's um, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because that knowledge has not had any effect on him. He's learned all of this, all of this knowledge. For example, a, a famous, uh, a very good example which could be used uh, upon a lot of brothers. We learn Asma wa Sifat. Okay? Asma wa Sifat, Nusbit wa Sifat kama ja. Yeah, we say Allah, Sami' khas, we, 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 uh, Now. What is the smell of Sifat? Some people don't know what the smell of Sifat is. Barakallahu fikum. The smell of Sifat is a knowledge of the uh, names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you learn mm-hmm. about the names and attributes of Allah. You learn that Allah is as-sami, the all-hearing, and he has the, uh, the, the attribute of, of being able to hear. Mm-hmm. Okay? And it's all good refuting Ahl al-Bid'ah. That's part of the religion. We refute Ahl al-Bid'ah, Jahmiya, Mu'taziya, Sha'i, Ramatu, Radi, all of them. But for yourself, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as-sami, He can hear everything, but then you say things which are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see you, but then you do those actions which are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know he's al-alim, he, he, he knows everything, yet you do those actions which are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is the point of that knowledge? How has that knowledge benefited you? In reality, it hasn't benefited you uh, at all. And uh, Sheikh uh, Abdul Aziz, I got a question for you. Huh? MashaAllah, inshallah, inshallah to takharraj hadhi sana, inshallah you'll graduate this year. No. If, all go, if all goes well, inshallah, and we don't no. have any problems. Go to Sharia, fiqh. Khalas, that's no. our takhasus. In no. fiqh, what's the first chapter that we study? Tahara. Tahara, jameel. Inside Tahara, which is the first bab, the first chapter? The water, miyah. Bab al miyah, the water. What's normally the second one? It's usually after the miyah is... Um... ا so first is water and then it's ania utensils okay no. why because you have water you Okay, first you, you 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 try to work out what water can you use for wudu because you got your pure water that you can use Okay, the water is not going to float around in the air. You have to put it somewhere, right? So, we, mm-hmm. we learn what type of utensils are you allowed to put it in. This is water. Okay? Our topic today is knowledge, ilm. Ilm has mm-hmm. to also be put somewhere, in, inside a place. Mm-hmm. Where is the knowledge put? It's put in the heart. What's the way of knowledge? The heart. What's the utensil of knowledge? Where is knowledge placed? It's placed in the mm-hmm. Heart. That's what uh, Rasim, uh, Sheikh Rasim in the beginning of his Ta'zim al-ilm, what does he say? He says, فَالْعِلْمُ جَوْهَرُ النَّطِيفِ لَا يَصْلِحُ إِلَّا لِقَلْبِ النَّظِيفِ He said, knowledge is a جَوْهَرُ uh, النَّطِيفِ It's a precious jewel. And it's not befitting for anything except for a clean heart. When you have jewelry, The sisters that are watching, they have their jewelry, their earrings and whatever they wear. Where do they put it? They don't leave it lying around. They don't just put it in a drawer. Like they put it in a nice safe place. Okay, and then they hide it away. Okay? Same thing with knowledge. Knowledge is placed in the heart. So it's upon us to use this knowledge and to allow that knowledge to uh, pure our hearts. If, for example, you on your thob, you have some dirt on your thob, aren't you shy of going in front of people? Especially like Mashaikh, aren't you shy of going in your the night thobes, the short sleeve thobes in, in front of Sheikh Saadi Shithi or in front of Sheikh Qasim? But if, if, you're, if you're shy to go in front of the creation with dirt which is on the thobe, then why are you not shy to be in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when your heart is full of filth and sins? And so uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa laki yanzuru ila Mm-hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at, you know, how you look. 
if your shamal is on point, if your, uh, you know, you got a tailor made sword, it doesn't look like all of those things. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at? He looks at your heart and your actions. He looks at your heart and your actions. So that's what knowledge should do to us. And also hadith number six from Arba'in Awiyah, which is in... Uh, which is in the Bukhari Muslim. Allah in the field just to be mudra is a solo hat, solo hal just the kulu, by the facet, facet, just the kulu, lava hill kalb. Verily, in the body, there's a muscle of flesh. If that is sound, then the whole body is sound. And if that is corrupt, then the whole body is corrupt. Allah wa hill kalb. That is nothing other than what? The heart. The heart. There's something we have to look after. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would make, in fact, from the most uh, continuous du'as that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to make not just a normal du'a but a du'a that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi would regularly repeat Ya Muqallib Al-Qulub Thabbit Qalbi Ala Deenik O oh, turn our hearts make my heart firm upon your uh, religion so all of these actions okay from all of these actions the heart ikhlas are we sincere when we are seeking knowledge okay are, uh, are we coming sins which are putting uh, black dots on our heart until it becomes Hard okay, all of these things we have to look at, so we have to take care of our hearts and also act upon that knowledge that we learn. Okay, we learn something, even if especially fiqh is an easy example because fiqh is in Afa'al uh, al in the Mukallafin, in the actions of the slaves. You learn how to do this, how to pray like this, khalas. you learn Rafa al Yadain is Sunnah, and there's Adilla Mutawatir, you do Rafa al Yadain. You learn that this is another dua, you learn. Let's, let's, for example, let's go through salah. The first dua normally we recite, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. There's another dua, Allahumma ba'id bayni wa Khalas, you implement it. Okay? And obviously this is sunnah, but any other thing, you learn this is haram, you stay away from it. You learn this is halal or this is wajib, you do it. This is how we should be. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in hadith, Muslim wa quran hujjatul laka wa alayh. The Quran is either proof for you or against you. The Quran will come yawm al and say, Oh Allah, this person knew what was halal and haram. He knew what was inside of him, but he didn't act upon him. So I'm a witness against him yawm al qiyamah. But he'll come to a scholar. Scholar meaning the one who acts upon the knowledge, the beneficial knowledge that benefited him. And the Quran will come and say, Ya Allah, he read me, he memorized me, he learned and understood what was inside me, and then he acted upon him. So the Quran was a proof for uh, this person. Hence why a student of knowledge should always have uh, some ibadah that he does. He should have a uh, word from the Quran, a daily portion that he recites from the Quran every single day. How can you be a student of knowledge not recite Quran? Many ulama say you can't be a student without memorizing the Quran. Never mind not reciting. Okay? If you're a bit older in age, you weren't able to memorize at a young age and it's a bit harder, khair, but at least you recite the Quran. Some don't even recite the Quran. How can a day go by you and you do not touch a, a page of the Mus'haf? And that really is a, um, is a deficiency from ourselves, including myself. We ask Allah SWT to you know, hide our deficiencies and to grant us beneficial knowledge. And also, some people think acting on knowledge is going to take time away from my seeking knowledge. There's a dars going on. You know what? Let me go to a dars instead of praying nawafil. Now, we mentioned that talib al-ilm is better than the other uh, nawafil. However, by you acting upon that knowledge also, that's going to cement your knowledge in your heart. That's what some of the salaf would say, and it might be Imam Ahmad, if I'm not mistaken. Kunna nasta'inu ala hifz al-hadith bil-amali bihi. We used to seek aid in memorizing a hadith with what? By acting upon the hadith. A hadith came and we learnt it. You know, you could just, if you just learn things theoretically, it could go. But when you act upon it or a demonstration, anything like that, it's going to stay in your head more. If you type, if you type here on Google, there's something called the learning pyramid. It shows how a person learns. Okay? In there, if you just listen, you only retain, I think, 5%. If you read, you only retain 10%. But if you act upon your knowledge, what you learn, you retain about 60% of that knowledge, according to that study. So this should be something which we should have a goal that we are learning not to just have information, but to make it beneficial knowledge. We can act upon it. We gain more reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cleanse our hearts. Because in Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, uh, in the Quran, He says, Yawm la يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ The Yawm Al-Qiyamah is a day that no wealth, nobody's kids, nothing is going to help them except the one who comes with a clean and sound heart. 
Allah, this is a reminder for myself as all of us, we, you know, we have sins and if it was shown to the people and you know, the people would have come close to us at all. So let's go out and hide those sins and uh, you know, forgive us for those sins and keep us far away from these sins in the uh, future. So that would be, uh, inshallah, hopefully a sufficient answer to the question what is considered uh, beneficial. Uh, Sheikh, uh, the second question is, how should a student of knowledge uh, split their time in points of knowledge? How, how do they split their time as a talib al This is not a uh, good question. Now, if you think of it in terms of tartib, you've learned how important it is and what type of beneficial knowledge that we want. Now, okay, we have 24 hours in a day. Okay, now I want to split this answer into, answer into two, which firstly talk a bit about the importance of time itself. Okay, because some people just don't understand the importance of time. They say, I've got free time now. I want time to, I've got time to kill. These two phrases should never come out of student knowledge's mouth. They should never be, when people message me, are you free? I always reply, what is it that you need? Okay, because I'm not free. I'm either reading something or doing something. If it's something urgent, khlas, I'll help you. If it's not, then, uh, you know, I ask you to excuse me, because I've got important things to do, which is trying to learn the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheikh, sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, as as talab al ilm, it's important to help the people and you know to answer questions. And a lot of time, you know, people they message you, they want an answer and stuff like this. And sometimes you get back to them. Sometimes you don't get back to them at all. And you know, subhanallah, a lot of them might think you know, you're arrogant or you know you think of yourself or this that. It's not. It's not that you're just so busy with you know, studying yeah. and you have lots of things to do, and you have to prioritize. You know. So you can't really give you a time to everybody. It's good you should help others and you should not good to ignore others and answer the questions. Also, when it comes to fatawa, sometimes, you know, you might not know the answer. So you'd have to go and ask the sheikh and then, you know, we'll take a day, maybe a sick couple yeah. of hours. And some people are impatient. They want quick fatwa, you know. So it's important that there's husn al-dhan, there's good thoughts of talib al when they don't get back to you, you know. Yeah. You when know, they don't get back to you, don't think that you know. <laughs> Uh, this is something I wanted to mention a bit later on, talking about adab of a student, how we should ask somebody a question. Okay, so we'll talk about it there as well, inshallah. But just generally, yeah, we help. That's why it's the same question. Uh, most people ask me, I get back to them. Sometimes if I don't know the answer, I can't get back. Or if I'm mutaraddil, if I'm not sure, like I've heard the muscle, I remember studying it, but I'm not 100% sure. It's not allowed. It's, shari, it's not allowed for me to answer the question because I'm not 100% sure. I don't have yaqeen in the answer. Okay, what if I end up saying something wrong and you act upon it? The sin's upon me. So I have to ask, many times I have to ask my teachers, and they're busy, so I have to wait for their reply. I might reply to you the following day. Okay, just because a person, because you message a sheikh at a time that suits you, don't, don't think he, don't, don't expect him to reply back at a time that suits you as well. Nah, he's going to reply back to a time that suits him. And there's many other things, and inshallah, uh, towards the end, uh, I'm going to mention a few etiquettes on how to even ask a sheikh a question, and how to have uh, sabr with the sheikh, some adab of student on knowledge. Um, but, um, now, so back to the question, which is regarding the importance of time. That some students on knowledge love to you know, kill time, go out. I mean, going out is good, okay, here and there with the friends, etc. But some people do it every single day, okay? And they just really waste their time. And uh, from the first Lessons that a student studies generally, Usul al What's the first ayah that comes in Usul al Sheikh? Surah al Asr. Surah al Asr. What's the first word? Wal Asr. By time. Wal Asr. By time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by time. Generally, what happens is, you know, it's like because it's aqidah book, they talk about the aqidah perspective of it. You can only swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can swear by, he, by what He wants because it's all His creation. But there's an also another fa'ida, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't swear by anything except that it has some importance to it. And why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swearing by here? Swearing by time. Swearing by time. Shows that time is something important. I've got a quote with me here from uh, Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, in his book, Al-Da'u uh, Al-Dawa, or another name, Al-Jawab Al-Kafi. He says, mm-hmm. it's a long quote, so I'll try to just... Uh, uh, you know, mention the beginning and the ending. He says, فَوَقْتُ الْإِنسَانِ هُوَ عُمْرُهُ فِي الْحَقِيقَةِ He says, the time of a person, that's his life. Sahih. You waste, you waste an hour of your time, that's an hour of your life gone. Think about that. 
you, you are not, you're not going to get that one hour again back. That one hour, you could have read two adza if you can recite fast one, if you can't. That's one whole taraweeh, you know, just uh, prayers normally is just over an hour. You could have done so much, you could have listened to a whole lecture, you could listen to two khutbahs, okay? That, that one hour, you're not getting back again. And at the end, and towards the end of the quote, he says, فَإِذَا قَطَعَ وَقْتَهُ فِي الْغَفْلَةِ وَالشَّهْوَةِ وَالْأَمَانِ الْبَاطِلَةِ وَكَانْ خَيْرْ مَا قَطَعَ بِهِ أَنَّوْ وَالْبَطَالَةِ فَمُوتُ هَذَا خَيْرُ اللَّهُ مِنْ حَيَاتِهِ He says, if the best of what you spend your time is hiddenness, spending in desires, whether it's, whether it's with girls, whether it's eating, any type of desire that it is, and things which have no benefit, and sleeping, and batala, batala is uh, not having any work, just being free. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah says, فَمَوْتُ هَذَا خَيْرٌ لَهُ مِنْ حَيَاتِهِ Death for this person is better for him than his life. He's not benefiting from his life, it's better if he just dies. It's a kalam shadeed, it's a bit severe, the kalam. Yeah, it's true. Why? What's in the hadith? The hadith of Rasulullah, a man's feet will not move on Yom Al-Qiyamah until he is asked about four things. From them is his time and how he spent it. Allah will ask you about this time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you how you spent this time. And, and also, um, and also part of the hadith, he will ask you about the knowledge and how you, uh, what you did with that knowledge. Okay? Spending uh, time, you know, in the correct way is very, very important. Okay? That's why uh, I mentioned two stories. I mentioned one of, from Umar from the past, the one from the, Say contemporary. I mentioned Imam Nawi and a story about Imam Al Albani, rahmahullah. Imam Al Nawi is mentioned in his biography. When guests used to come over, what would he used to do? He used to sharpen his pencils. He used to sharpen his pencils. Now you you might think that this isn't, you know, sharpening. You know, let's do it after the go. It takes two minutes. Like those two, two, three, five minutes. And back in the day, his pencils were different, so it might have taken a bit longer as well. So he's talking, he's, he doesn't really have to pay attention to what he's doing, his hands is moving, you know, in the sharpener like that, if that's how the sharpener was uh, back in those days. Um, if you give me one minute, my touch has gone low, so I'll have to go to my room. <laughs> give me one second. My roommate's there, so I came outside there when they disturb him. No, harsh, no, harsh. Give me one second, Just give me what to say, seconds, inshallah. <laughs> okay, can you still hear me? No, I'm smart, Sheikh. Okay, Alhamdulillah, back on charge. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so I was saying like Imam al nawi rahimahullah, he used to uh, sharpen his pencils. Now we also mm-hmm. have a story of, if it's, one second quickly, forgive me, one second. Uh, we also have a story of uh, Imam al-Bani rahimahullah. Now, Imam al-Bani rahimahullah, he, he had a door, okay? Now, I've heard different story, different narrations on the, of the story. However, they all, uh, you know, talk roughly about the same thing. Um, and I'll mention the one that our Sheikh Muhammad al-Ishaqi, uh, uh, he mentioned to us. Um, and he mentioned that 
Imam Bani, he had a door, okay? And this door, he called in the carpenter. And he said, the handle is, let's say, on the right side. I want it to be on the left side. Okay, or, mm-hmm. it, uh, or it was either a, this is a push door, I want it to be a pull door, or the opposite, along these lines. So the carpenter, you know, this normal person, he looked at the sheikh and he said, what difference does that make? Imam Bani, yeah, he, what does he say? He says, that. I counted that. If it was like this, I'll have to take this many extra steps, move forward, and I entered and leave this room this many times a day. So this, all of this would equal to me losing, let's say, 10 minutes. Oh, okay, or five minutes. However much the uh, time was, I can't remember exactly the time. What, but what is, what's the point of the story? Even if it was two, three minutes, he still would have done it. Why? Because the ulama knew the importance of time. Because imagine if it's, let's say it's 10 minutes. Plus over a week, that's one hour. Some people that maybe are watching this live, they only attend the rules which are one hour, one hour a week. Actually, that's your weekly dars that the Shaykh has just saved now, the amount of time he stayed. So, even, uh, even, oh. even, uh, even, uh, Al Imam al Siyuti in his, uh, Al Fiyah, he's got a, uh, he's got a line of poetry. He says, Asri' a khali ilmi fi thalathi, al akli wal mashi wal kitabati. He says, Asri' a khali ilmi fi thalathi, al akli wal mashi wal kitabati. He says, oh, uh, you know, my brother in knowledge, be fast in three things. In eating, in walking, and in writing. And some ulama add reading as well. Why? Because instead of walking from a place to another, taking you ten minutes, five minutes, you five minutes earlier, plus five minutes you can read now. Eating, instead of taking one hour to eat, take half an hour to eat. Or mm-hmm. even half an hour. Instead of taking half an hour, take ten minutes. You save twenty minutes, you can do... That. That's the juice of the Quran if you can recite fast. Mm-hmm. Okay? So the ulama, if you look at the ulama, they take a lot of um, a lot of uh, importance to their time. They give a lot of importance to their time, and you have to. You you can't be wasting time as a student of knowledge. You got to put all of your effort into being a student of knowledge. Okay. Sure. And so I, something. No, Sorry. To follow, to follow. That's what they said. Knowledge. If you give it all, it will give you a little bit back. Tamam, How about if you don't give it nothing? If you only give a little bit, it will give you nothing. Yeah, it's going to come in and go. It's fast. If you just attend a dars here and there, don't revise. Uh, and it's happened to me with this, uh, some lessons. Um, there was a tahil al-fiqhi, a dora by Shah Amr Bajit. I attended about five years ago. Okay? Mm-hmm. And Abu wasn't the best. And he's a sheikh, he's doing it again now. And uh, I'm listening to it again and I'm like, subhanAllah, some of these things is like the first time I'm hearing it again. In that dora, I became jahid. Why? Because I didn't go over again. And my excuse was that, you know, five years ago, I didn't really know much Arabic. I didn't really understand. But <laughs> yeah, got a lot of to, to forgive us. I wanted to mention a statement of uh, Yahya ibn Abi Kathir. No. No. Okay. Uh, uh, let, me, let me just mention no, just this. A, just uh, a question. Forward, forward, forward. Let me mention this. Uh, uh, <laughs> let me mention this because I think it's quite important, inshallah. Uh, and then we'll do the question, okay? Yahya ibn Abi Kathir, he has, he has a famous statement. لا يستطاع العلم براحة الجسم That you can never attain knowledge no. by just the comfort of your body. However, there's one thing a lot of people don't know. And a lot of shurrah that were explaining Sahih Muslim, they were a bit, they had this problem about, about the statement, okay? Do you know where Imam Muslim put this, state, uh, this statement? He put it in Kitab al-Salah. Okay, he put it in Kitab al-Salah. Mm-hmm. And which chapter? He put it in Babu Mawaqit al-Salah. He put it in the chapter of the timings of the Salah. What, what Ajay. relevance does that statement have to mo- the timings of Salah? There's no reference. There's no relevance. However, Imam al nawi in his uh, book, uh, in his uh, explanation of Muslim, he mentions if you count, if you look at the hadith, and I think it was hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, Imam a Muslim comes with about 12 narrations of the same hadith. 12 different narrations, hadithna, hadithna, till the end of the same hadith. 12, 12 different uh, wordings of the hadith. And that whole chain for one 
one chain, you, he probably had to travel so so many weeks or months. So Imam Muslim comes and he places this statement after all of these ahadiths. He's indirectly saying, I've uh, gathered for you. Don't think I just relaxed at home and I chilled and just, you know, listened to YouTube videos and just, that was it. La, I traveled. I had to go through a hardship. Uh, I had to memorize, I had to revise, I had to sit down, memorizing these. I had to go travel to this person and then go to this person and uh, hear it from this person, then go to this person and ask him about, is this authentic, uh, is he thick or not, and so on. Um, so I just that was very important to mention, and you had a question now. Jazakallah uh, Sheikh. Uh, question is, uh, does a person need a teacher to study, and also, uh, does he need to memorize? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll answer this with the previous question because somebody said, "How do I split my time?" Okay, and mm -hmm. we can we can add this as well. The question was again, "How?" What was the question? Can you say the question again, please? How could you memorize? And how can memorize? you memorize? Do, you, do you need do you need to memorize to be? And also, do you need to have a teacher? Teacher, teacher uh, memorization. Okay, when splitting your time, okay, then. And memorizing, all of this is built upon a teacher, okay? And we'll get to the teacher in a little while, inshallah. Yeah. Firstly, how to split one's time, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, like we said, you're given the importance of time. Now, like me, for example, if somebody was asking me what I'm doing, I know literally every hour from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock or from Zohar to Asr, I'm studying or I am doing this. And you should, for every hour or for every section of time that you have, you should have something that you're doing, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, to fill it up with what? We also we mentioned previously generally seeking knowledge and ibadah and also the other obligations where whether it be family, wife, etc. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, do I have to memorize? This is another thing. So now you have to place time out for memorization. A lot of people ask me, okay, how did I memorize? Because Alhamdulillah, as you know, I memorized 15, 16 mutun and the Mustawat al Arba and some others as well. People people think that oh you have your half is so it's easy for you. But they don't see it. I sit for a minimum of three hours a day trying to memorize. An hour after generally my... And it's also a struggle as well. Something that, it's a struggle. Some things are not easier than others. You know, it takes time. It's not just like khalas. You have to it give it time. time. In, the, in, in, in the beginning, even in Quran, one line was so much fun. And once I did five lines, mm -hmm. and I was happy. I went to, to my family. I did five lines. Today. It was like, but then the more you do it, it's, it's like a muscle. The more you work mm -hmm. on every single day, Every single day, sit down for... Uh, when I was doing Quran, by eight hours a day. Eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. Now when I'm doing Mutun, and I was because I have Mutun, then I have Quran, then I have other classes, about three hours a day. Mm -hmm. Okay? So people don't realize that you have to put time out for memorization. And also, you have to put time out for, uh, for memorization and also understanding. Both of them are needed. Okay? Mm -hmm. Memorization, Ibn Uthaymi, rahimahullah, he says, he says, Qara'na kathiran, he says, we read a lot of books. Okay? However, we memorized a little bit. But we benefited more with what we memorized than what we read. What we read, we read it and it just went. Whereas when we memorized, that stayed with us. And then we understood it as well. That's staying with us uh, now for a long time. And Imam Ahmadi was asked that, can somebody give fatwa when he knows 100,000 ahadith? He said, no. 200,000? La. 300,000? La. 400,000? He said, Arju. Maybe. 400,000 hadith? Okay. Maybe. Allah. And hadith back in the day wasn't just Anabi Hurayta radiallahu anhu anna hu qal qadr rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La. The hadith was, uh, for example, Muta Imam Malik, um, uh, Haddathana Nafi' an Ibn Umar an Ibn Nabi. That's a short chain, but ala kulli hal. Um, they would memorize the whole. Uh, the whole chain Okay, so you have to memorize And study Which books you start off with and study uh, To put in your timetable One word which is key Which is At-tadarruj at Which is leveling up They say At-tadarruj Mi'yaru at-takharruj At-tadarruj Leveling up This is the measurement for Graduating Like becoming strong in knowledge You start off with the smaller books Then you go higher and higher and higher. It's also a saying of some of the ulama, ta'am al-kibar, summa al-sigar. The food of the 
uh, of the of the elders of the, the high ulama this is poison for the kids okay or oh, sorry or oh, my bad ta'am al kibar thumma sighar food for people adults is poison for the kids a, yeah. a, a kid one year old you can't start giving him i don't know uh, al laham or ruz me rice chicken and chips steak whatever <laughs> whatever is you want to eat you can't, yeah, it's going to kill him it's going to get stuck in his throat it's going to die same thing in knowledge you don't start with the big books start with the small books and you level up and if you do that you will go to a high level much quicker than the one who's just going around doing okay in this masala there's 10 opinions this person said this person said that no one with his dalil move on have a full picture know what to do first then after you can add every time you can add more add more um add more so as regarding memorization and also uh, time regarding a teacher this is very important okay a teacher is a must and a teacher is the one who will tell you exactly which books to study which ones to memorize because he will know you he will know your level so okay? sorry should also if you look at the sunnah of the scholars of the ulama and everybody everybody had to have studied one for a sheikh it's like a chain of narration you can't just see just start opening books and stuff because you can get misguided you know well you get misguided if you don't have a sheikh the shaytan is your sheikh allah almost down everybody has a sheikh you know you need someone because you might understand something wrong you need someone to guide you to assist you someone who knows your level someone who so this is the sunnah of of how the scholars would would, would yeah. teach you every sheikh would have a student who yeah. study with a sheikh now no shak he had mentioned two points one story story of uh, shaykh asim rahimahullah He mentioned mm-hmm. that these people who are Suhufi, we call them Suhufi or Mushafi, the Quran, they also just read from books. Okay, and also you have the famous saying that whoever Sheikh is his books, he'll make more mistakes than he does that which is correct. There's one person mm-hmm. who came on TV, and this, this clip, uh, it's it, it's out there, it's, it's on YouTube. You type in Sheikh uh, Rasami, and I think maybe Bukhari or something after that, it might come up. There's a person who came on TV, he's not a student of knowledge or anything. Okay, he just he learned one of the other sciences, and he came thinking he knew. you know what's going on and he wanted to pick up an islamic book and talk about it and he said sahih bukhari was not written by imam bukhari there's nobody called uh ali ismail ibn ibrahim ibn bardiz bin bukhari there's nobody called that in fact the person who wrote sahih bukhari his name is jum'ah bukhari his name is jum'ah you know why you know in the beginning of the book he says Jama'ahu al-Bukhari <laughs> This book is a hadith Jama'ahu Muhammad Ismail al-Bukhari Yeah, yeah, Jama'ahu Muhammad Ismail al-Bukhari He thought Jama'ahu means, means compiled He thought he meant Jum'ah, that's his name So this, when you don't have teachers, you fall into stupid mistakes like this Literally stupid How more foolish can you get? And also what you mentioned The asl of it is, is in, uh, in the hadith of Abu Dawood Tasma'oon wa yisma'u minkum wa yisma'u mimman sami'a minkum This person mm-hmm. said to the Sahaba, you are learning from me. You are taking it directly from me. And then those who came after you will take from you. And so on. Meaning you'll have a teacher. When, but when taking a teacher, there's something which is very, very important. Okay? And there are three things I'm going to mention. The, the first point falls into the second point. However, just for the, due to the importance of it, I'm going to make it into a separate point. The first is taking your knowledge from the correct source, the correct teacher, from Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah. Somebody who follows the Quran and Sunnah from the understanding of the of the Salaf. Why? Like Ibn Mubarak says, in the Hadil Ayyma Deen Fanzur Amman Takhudun Adinakum. Well this knowledge is your religion. So, t- so look at whom you're taking your religion from. Al Ibn Sirin and both says in the Muqaddim of Muslim. Ibn Sirin says, Lam yakunu yasaluna an al isnad falama waqa'at al fitna qalu samulana rijalakum You know, we never used to ask about who your teachers, who you heard it from. Once the fitna happened, meaning the killing of Uthman, then we started to say, all right, tell us your, tell us your men. To tell us who you are, uh, you've taken this knowledge from. And then we would look. If from Ahl al-Bid'a, we wouldn't take from him. From Ahl al-Sunnah, then we would take from him. That is something very, uh, very, very important to uh, take. That We only take from those who are upon the correct methodology of following the Salaf. The second uh, thing that you should look at when taking a teacher, the Salahiyat al-Shaykh. Is, mm-hmm. is the Shaykh a sound person to take from? Meaning in his conduct. Like, like I said, number one can fall into this. However, due to its importance, I separated it. Okay? I say, Usaymi rahimahu ta'azim al-ilm only mentions the second and third one. Salahiyat al-Shaykh 
is he a person who has good conduct or is he an open sinner? Okay? You have to look at these things. Why? Because you are going to be affected by your teacher. Mm-hmm. If you look at some of the the, the, the kibar teachers of uh, the students of Ibn Baz, you'll see even the way they speak, it's like Ibn Baz. Look at the students of Ibn Athamin. Ibn Athamin, you know, he always says, mm-hmm. This is two types. If it's this, then it's haram, this is halal. Look, now look at Sheikh Khalid Mushaykh, for example, and Sheikh Haytham Sarhan. All of their books, they've done the same thing, they split into two types, etc. They take from the sheikhs. So if your sheikh does not have good conduct, how, how, can you, you can't, well, how can you go to him and take knowledge from him? All the bad habits he has is going to fall onto you. Be somebody who just mocks the religion and laughs about the religion. You're going to think it's no problem and you're going to mock the religion. And mocking the religion is kufr. And you're going to fall out of the fall of Islam without you even knowing. The third and last thing, inshallah, is going to a teacher who knows how to teach. Mm-hmm. Okay? Especially for your level. Okay? Somebody who is will be giving to give you time. He makes you understand. Okay, for you, that's the person that you should go to. So these are three, you could say, principles of when taking a uh, teacher. And gen- the general ruling is those who are older in age, they are better to go to. You go to mm-hmm. the kibar ulama. You don't go to someone like myself. You only come to, you don't even come to someone like myself. But if there's nobody else, and you're, then you have to, then khalas. And if I'm able to answer, I answer. But the answer is that you go to the kibar. You go to for example, nowadays Sheikh Salih al Hussein, Sheikh Salih al Fuzan, uh, Sheikh Suleiman al Ruhi, and uh, many, many uh, others. So uh, hopefully that uh, answers the question of um, of the teacher. Also, uh, just moving on, just remember the statement regarding mm-hmm. memorization. And I think this is very important. I said memorization, you have to put a lot of time into it. There's a, there's, there's a saying right now. There's a saying right now where I just remembered. They say, At-takararu yu'allimu al-himar. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله خوان الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله خوان الله كني غاز كني هيمي Can hear me, let me know, inshallah. Just want to quickly finish up. Sorry, the, Sheikh, the, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. The internet is a bit okay. dry. Tawad, tawad. Okay, خلاص we'll we wrap this up in شاء الله. Okay, okay. Uh, smoke, quick, smoke, 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 smoke. Last point, last point regarding uh, uh, memorization. The saying which is التكرار يعلم الحمار. Repetition teaches even the donkey. And that's quite funny if you think about it. The reputation even uh, teaches a donkey. How does it teach a donkey? Uh, back in the day, if you want to take a taxi, there are no taxis. There's no Uber. There's no Kareem. Okay? So, you, what would you have to do? You would have to go on a donkey. So, if you want to go to point A to point, uh, point B, you have to get on a donkey. And obviously, donkey doesn't know the, the route. So, the owner would have to walk with the donkey. Now, imagine a donkey is doing the same route 10 times a day. And every day for a year. You come back after a year, what would the owner have to do? You just say on the donkey, it'll tap the donkey and automatically your donkey will go drop you off and come back. Mm-hmm. Why? Due to the reputation the donkey has learned. Mm-hmm. So if that's a donkey, 
akramun Allah wa akramun Allah then what about humans so okay so i think this is uh, it is a uh, this is a something which people lack in define memorization hard however i, I personally think don't put the time in okay people now alhamdulillah i might be able to memorize a bit faster now i used to people don't say that daily 3 hours for example i said down when i was in quran 8 hours minimum Okay, people don't see that, but they just see, oh, you're happy, you can do it faster. That a lot of time and effort goes into it. Sometimes I memorize something, okay, the following day I come back to it and I start, it's not even there, I have to do it again. When I finish a book, I don't move on to the next book until I can read that previous book from beginning to end, without mistakes, maybe one mm -hmm. or two. Okay, so I think that's very, very important for uh, memorization that people don't take into consideration. That repetition, to keep going, consistency. You have to keep doing it every single day. And Shah Asimi, he gives this uh, advice as well. Memorize every day, even if it's something. Just keep that muscle of memorization going. That's why they say uh, Ibn Malik, the author of Al-Fiyatul Malik, even on his deathbed, he memorized five lines of poetry or something. On his deathbed. The day he died, he memorized poetry. That's how the ulama was. Repetition, keep every day memorizing, 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 memorizing. Um, no. Sheikh Allah Ibarak Shikum, the time is a bit late and I need to message my family quickly. Can we just take take a few questions inshallah? Jazakallah khairan for your yeah. beneficial question uh, talk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in your mizan hasanat and inshallah mm -hmm. hopefully you've inspired people to seek knowledge. Jazakallah khair. So if you guys have any su'al, any yeah. question, barakallah if you can pertain to this inshallah then. Feel free to ask uh, me in the link. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, Muhammad Hadifa, someone said we need to, what we need to do, do to have a clean heart and what do we need if the knowledge doesn't have an effect on us? Something like this. What we heart. need to do, have a clean. Uh, okay, I think I understood. I think what he's trying to say is what to do if we're mm -hmm. seeking knowledge, but that knowledge is not having an effect on our heart. Uh, I think you know it goes back to the statement of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you know we should study for others not Allah for ba al ilmu an yakuna illa lillah that the the knowledge itself refused to be accepted for Allah so that knowledge made us become better this uh, and if that is not uh, uh, that is not uh, happening then a number of things you have to question question your niyyah firstly question your niyyah like, are you actually doing it for Allah or are you doing it for something else if you're doing it for something else Allah will give you whatever you're doing it for but the uh, the dunya uh, the, the the reward al ukhrawi you won't get okay um, also look at your ibadah are you doing any ibadah okay are you always on the last of for salah or are you there like you you know you know the reward of paying in the first of okay and all the hadith regarding that and going into the masjid and the congregation being 27 times more um, rewardable but are you doing that are you doing istighfar you're doing all these sins but are you asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you the prophet in one majlis would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness a hundred times. And the person is ma'asum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as how many sins do we do day and night? And how many times do we actually ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us? Yeah. Allah <laughs> Allah khair, Shaykh. Someone said about man is talib al -ilm. That's an interesting question. Marrying a talib al -ilm. How is it marrying a talib al-ilm or talib al -ilm? Okay, look, we have to break the reality, okay? It's not something which is you know, it's not like Jannah, okay? Jannah is in Jannah, not here. Mm -hmm. You're not going to marry a student of knowledge and then whilst they, you know, you sit with them, they're going to recite Bukhari to you and then do all of that. Like, that's not going to happen. The reality is the student is going to be poor, you know, generally, okay? Okay, you have to have sabr. Generally, this, 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 huh? okay? You don't think a student, a student of knowledge is going to have money, like, he he'll 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 you won't have the best living conditions all the time. Sometimes it might be okay, but you you most of the time you won't have good. Uh, so I think Imam Shafi'i, I think it was him or some of the salaf would say that you, you won't know, you won't have the sweetness of knowledge until you taste poverty. Uh, also, um, also um, don't think that the student's gonna stay with you at home twenty four seven. Look, what's gonna happen? He's gonna come eat. And say, oh, sorry, I got a dars to go to. I have to go to a lesson. I got this to do. Why? Because the student knows he the importance of his time, so he's going to use his time in the most beneficial things. Yes, he he knows the right that he has to give to his wife, and he'll give that right. But it might not necessarily be how much you you want five hours. You want five, him five hours a day to sit with you, or maybe not a day, but you want him to sit with you for hours. Not even for five hours. How much could you study in that time? Okay. Obviously, a student of knowledge, especially the one who has wisdom, he will know how to 
uh, deal with this time. Okay, but don't expect it to be just like you know love hearts and flowers and all of that. La, spanish so student is hard. Even even for the guy, the woman has her patience. Even the guy has her patience. Okay, uh-huh. if if you've married another student of knowledge, خلاص, you this woman might want her to do something. She's gonna come along and be like, لا, actually there's خلاف in this. There's this and okay, she must start debating you on some مسائل. Okay, especially as a guy, you know you want. The the guy generally he wants to be the the, the main figure in the house so that you you have to have patience and stuff like that okay and uh, many of the things so the point being is that marrying a student knowledge is not something easy if you want to marry a student knowledge you have to my advice sabiru uh, isbiru wa sabiru have sabr and then have sabr for having that sabr upon sabr okay it's not going to be uh, something which is really uh, easy. Jazakallah khair Sheikh inshallah this will be the last question um, uh, let, let's pick the manners one that he just asked yeah tfadl tfadl Sheikh okay could you elaborate on the manners of a student knowledge manners is very very important if you see a person that does not have manners no, and he claims knowledge know that this person does not have the reality of knowledge and rather he has the just a picture of knowledge okay Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah he says adab al-mar unwanu sa'adatihi wa falahihi that the 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 mannerisms of a person that is like the the title or the address for his uh, happiness in uh, and success in the dunya and obviously the opposite can be said also and yusuf ibn al hussein he says bil adabi tafham al ilm he says with with the manners that's how you will understand knowledge and the salaf will teach mannerisms to the uh, to the children and the students before seeking knowledge even sirin rahimahullah says kanu yata'allamun al-hadiya kama yata'allamun al-ilm we used to learn mannerisms just as we used to learn knowledge okay now this is very very important you have to have knowledge uh, your mannerisms in a number of things and inshallah i'll, I'll wrap this up mannerisms in of in of yourself okay how how do you dress when going to a daras what's your niya all of these things imam malik was before going to any lesson of hadith he would have a shower he would comb his hair he would put uh, he would put a perfume on etc there's um, there's uh, mannerisms with your teacher a way of speaking to a teacher one person messaged me and i didn't reply to him and he got really mad i still I just ignored him okay he messaged me saying that how can you say this and he said this and this person said this and that if you read the books of uh, students uh, manners of student knowledge none of that is from the manners of student knowledge for example when asking a, a question first you, you should think why i'm asking this question what's your intention then ask is the question as well. ask Sorry? them questions yeah that's the second point yani, for example some people you know start with assalamu alaikum uh, you know some people they would just say they would just ask without starting the salam or they would you know they would uh, for example like someone said yo gee i got a question i'm like so a number of things i was going to mention that the first why are you asking the question secondly is the question itself beneficial thirdly when you're asking the question is your teacher is this the correct time to ask the teacher is he talking to somebody else does he look angry is he hungry all of these things you have to take into consideration if it is that's what ibn abbas the student of zaid ibn sabit radiyallahu anhu ibn zaid ibn sabit if he was sleeping because always ibn abbas in the person of fasting is only 13 okay mm-hmm. he would go and in the sun he would wait for zaid radiyallahu anhu and zaid would come and he would wait hours and he would ask why I, why are you waiting for me you're, you're the nephew of the prophet sallallahu you said la hakadha umirna naf'ala bil ulama this is how we were taught to respect the ulama we don't disturb him you're sleeping mm-hmm. we leave you to sleep mm-hmm. and also from the, mm-hmm. the etiquette is how to ask salam make dua you don't say sheikh you said this however this sheikh said this like don't mention the sheikh to say sheikh uh, i've got a question uh, sheikh ahsan allah alaykum may allah reward you you said something i didn't really understand there's another hadith it seems like it's contradiction it's, could you clarify this more yeah because you 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 just what, attended one lesson you read one book in english the sheikh has been studying for years, read probably 10 volumes of books on that masala, and you're going to come and say, oh, but this guy said this. Relax yourself. So that's etiquette with your teacher. Then etiquette in your lesson. You don't lean in your lesson. You don't bring your legs out in your lesson. Then there's etiquette with the students of knowledge, your classmates, not have jealousy, uh, help them, help the khair, because uh, knowledge, like Shah al said, is mercy between the students. And as long as that mercy stays, 
then that's how you will benefit with your knowledge. Uh, so even uh, even Kathir in the Bidaya wa Nihaya, he praises a Zahabi. And Shaykh Qasim, uh, this ta'aliq upon this, and he says, look, look Imam al Zahabi and even Kathir, they were, they were uh, you know, classmates, you could say. Why why have ha, has the knowledge been so beneficial? Tafsir al Kathir, Sir A'lam al Nubala, al Bidaya wa Nihaya, all of this. Why? Because they had good mannerisms and rahmah between each other. Then there's also mannerisms with your books. There's also mannerisms in the place of where you're staying. And all of these, all of these come in the mannerisms. We don't have time to go through them because I know it's really late. Myself, I have a lesson I'm teaching in the morning tomorrow. However, I would, rec- I would just, let's just finish with men- mentioning a number of books that somebody could study. Uh, two main books. Let's just keep it to two main books, inshallah. And both of these books I plan on teaching when I go back to UK. The first is Tadhkirat al-Sami' wal-Mutakallim. Tadhkirat al-Sami' wal-Mutakallim. And it's, it's translated into English, okay? By Ibn Jumar. It's a very, very amazing book. And the second is Hilyatu Talib al-Ilm. Hilyatu Talib al-Ilm by Bakr. Abu Zaid and Ibn Athim, rahimahullah, also has an explanation of this. So I think we'll leave it for that because it's getting late for yourself and for me as well. Uh, Barakallahu mm-hmm. feekum. Zakallahu khair for having me. I ask Allah to keep like us in and to and accept from us. Uh, I do apologize towards the end. I was just messaging my family right now. Just wanted to... No, it's okay. It's okay. Jazakallah khairan for joining this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor you and preserve you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase the upon beneficial knowledge. Amen. How is uh, the university? Everything is good? Sorry? I said, I said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easier for you. So it keeps cutting out. Yeah, it keeps cutting. We live with that, inshallah. Barakallah. Jazakum Allah. We'll end with this, inshallah. I'm going to save the life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.